We're here just outside Detroit, Michigan for our first drive of the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado EV RST First Edition. This is the fully decked out version of Chevrolet's first all electric pickup truck. We've previously driven the work truck version, which is the bare bones fleet special version of this pickup. But the RST First Edition has all the bells and whistles and all the power too. Let's check it out. So up front, the Silverado EV's nose is a little more streamlined than the typical pickup truck. Also kind of helps with forward visibility to have this, the hood line sloping down a little bit. The RST gets a blank grill panel as opposed to the work truck's more traditional looking fake grill. So this gives it a more of an EV look. RST also gets a more aggressive front fascia treatment and a full width light bar that also makes it look a little more upscale and a little more like an EV. Now, all Silverado EVs come with a front trunk. Chevrolet calls it the E-Trunk. Uh, it has 10.7 cubic feet of cargo volume according to Chevrolet's measurements and a power outlet there as well. So moving along the side, the RST First Edition has these massive, imposing 24-inch wheels. Silverado badge on the door has a little built-in E logo there. Uh, standard running boards on the RST First Edition. And all Silverado EVs are four-door crew cabs, and they all have this flying buttress rear roof treatment that might look familiar to you if you remember the old Chevrolet Avalanche pickup truck. The rear window itself is upright, but these roof pillars give it a little bit more of a streamlined look. Uh, we've got our charge port door here. Nice handy steps built into the rear bumper to help you hoist yourself into the bed to grab stuff. And uh, we've also got GM's multi-flex tailgate like other GM gas engine pickups have. So this is my first time in the interior of the Silverado EV RST First Edition. It's got a nice uh, badge right on the center console to tell us that. This is a nice interior. It's not a really nice interior. We've got some nice uh, twin color contrast stitching on the dash, uh, red contrast stitching on the steering wheel, um, some RST badge on the steering wheel. This is not, uh, this is just kind of a textured material. It's not leather. Um, and as you get further down in the interior, the, the materials start to feel a little less upscale, some kind of hard plastic bits here and there. I do like having the nice built-in storage shelf on the passenger side of the dash. Some metallic uh, red finishes on the air vents. Uh, but overall, this is a nice interior. I'm not sure it's up to the flagship status of this vehicle or its price. Uh, the center console storage is, is nice and configurable. You can flip up the bin, of course. Got a deep well here. And also, in addition to twin cup holders at the back for the uh, rear seat passengers, we can also slide this bin and the dual forward cup holders. Just gives you a little more versatility there. And there's another deep well up here. Got a uh, shelf for uh, charging the wireless cell phone charger and there's a, a charging port uh, in this bin as well. Very versatile center console. You can, again, move this around to put it just where you want it and kind of customize your center storage. So while the materials are maybe not up to the flagship status of this vehicle, the infotainment screen and the digital gauge cluster are quite impressive. This is a 17.7 inch infotainment touchscreen. It's really nice to have an extra large map to look at and you can cycle through other functions as well pretty easily. Here's our drive mode screen. We've got the you know music setting. We've got the home screen where we can cycle through all the different features. Uh, the climate controls are situated at the bottom of the touchscreen, but thankfully we've also got physical controls as well. I especially like having physical uh, fan speed controls and the uh, temperature controls as well are just simple dials. We almost always appreciate uh, physical climate controls. They're just much easier to use when driving, but you do have additional controls, actually redundant controls in the touchscreen and your ventilated and heated seat uh, controls as well. So another thing that makes the Silverado EV feel upscale is it's very nice digital gauge cluster. 
Uh, not only are the graphics clean and clear, uh, the information is presented in a, in a clear fashion, and I especially like the fact that you can cycle through multiple displays and find one that kind of suits your taste. This one's probably my favorite. It's got the speedometer on the left-hand side and a big kilowatt meter on the right-hand side, which not only shows you how much energy you're giving the powertrain, but also when the regenerative braking is happening and you're actually putting charge back into the battery. So this one's probably my favorite, but we've got a nav system display, uh, one that shows the driver assistance systems, uh, one where the speedometer is in the center, and this one's also kind of a quiet screen with less information displayed. Some drivers like to have a simpler gauge readout. Here's one where the speedometer is in the center and the state of charge is on the left and the kilowatt meter is on the right. And again, my favorite. So great level of configurability to the gauge cluster. So the typical full-size crew cab pickup has a lot of space in the back seat and the Silverado EV is no exception. I have the driver's seat set for myself. I'm six foot six inches tall and I've got more than adequate leg room back here. Headroom, mm, not a big fan of these glass sunroofs, even though this one is fixed. There's a little bit of a drop down here, so I have enough headroom. Not particularly expansive though. In my particular seating position, I'm perfectly comfortable in these seats. We did have a passenger here that sits a little bit differently than I do, and he felt that because these seats flipped forward, there's a little bit of a bar here that he found kind of dug into his backside a little bit. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Uh, but overall, again, this is a gigantic full-size pickup. The space back here is very hospitable to adults, even big and tall adults. So because of the RST First Edition's Multiflex Midgate, the under rear seat storage is a little compromised compared to other full-size pickup trucks. These seat bottoms do flip forward. This is the charging cable. It comes in a carrying case, so there's a slot for that underneath the rear seat. A couple other very shallow bins, uh, but overall this is not much of a storage space because of the functionality of the mid-gate. Visibility is pretty good all around. The Silverado EV has a lower hood line than the conventional gas engine Silverado, so it feels a little more open view out the front. Mirrors are pretty good size as well. The traditional rear view mirror, I'm seeing the headrests in the back seat intrude on my view out the back, but I've also got a video camera rear view mirror, so that takes care of the headrest. Sometimes these video monitor rear view mirrors kind of throw my depth perception off a little bit and I don't like to use them. This one's pretty good and I do like that you don't have to worry about the headrests. I've got a clear unobstructed video view uh, out to the back. So the Silverado EV is a very big, very heavy vehicle, but it's also very powerful. A little bit later, we're gonna be going to a closed course to sample the acceleration in wide open watts or wow mode. Uh, but we're just in normal drive mode now on the uh, freeway and even here, it's, it's plenty quick. So despite the Silverado EV being very heavy, there's more than enough power. I don't think anybody is going to be wanting for power here. The acceleration is strong from pretty much any speed, and with the electric powertrain, you've got that instant torque. So this is a gutsy feeling vehicle. All right, now we are going to sample the wide open watts or wow mode, which unleashes the full 754 horsepower, 785 pounds feet of torque. Uh, it was recommended that we lower the vehicle to entry exit mode, get a little bit better launch. And here is the button to engage wow mode. <laughs> All right, and here we go. Let's give it a shot. Not bad. So that was... <laughs> It was pretty invigorating, especially when you consider that this thing is upwards of 9,000 pounds with 
full-grown adults uh, inside it that is getting up and moving for a vehicle that big probably not quite as pin you back in your seat as the Hummer EV I think that's got a thousand horsepower but uh, we were moving quickly nonetheless so the RST first edition comes standard with gigantic 24 inch wheels uh, there's not a lot of sidewall to cushion bumps and being that this is a very heavy EV the tire pressures are much higher than a normal gas engine vehicle I think I saw that it's 61 68 psi so um, all that considered the Silverado EV rides quite decently on the on a smooth highway but man if you hit expansion cracks potholes rougher pavement you really get a sense of the vehicle's heft for one thing probably sitting at close to 9,000 pounds here and also the fact that these are gigantic 24 inch wheels so it can be a little stiff and harsh over some rough pavement although that said uh, on the highway here it's not bad it, it, it seems to smooth out a little bit uh, when you're at freeway speeds on a decent road and speaking of freeway speeds we do have super cruise uh, the latest version of GM super cruise so I just activated I'm taking my hands off the wheel we're actually in a construction zone now um, and it's keeping it keeping things smooth um, allows you to be a little more relaxed behind the wheel take a little bit of the load off uh, driving duties so another thing I like about the Silverado EV is it's the options it gives you for one pedal driving you can have the one pedal driving mode off completely and in that mode you're just when you lift off the accelerator pedal you are coasting like a, a normal vehicle uh, but then there are two settings for one pedal driving normal and high and when you have it set on those then lifting off the accelerator pedal slows the vehicle and gives you regen braking so you've got two different levels kind of to tailor things to your taste some drivers think that the high setting is a little too high I tried it that way and it is very abrupt when you take your foot off the accelerator pedal but some people would like it that way I think I could get used to it and the other thing on top of that that they that Chevy gives you in addition is a regen brake paddle on the left spoke of the steering wheel so you've got regen braking on demand so it's really nice to have that many options for one pedal driving and then when you're doing that you are feeding juice back into the battery and improving the efficiency as well so I really like how they handled that and gave you that many options so this being a press drive event we didn't have the opportunity to test the Silverado EVs uh, maximum driving range or charging speed but both of them are class leading uh, the RST first edition has a claimed maximum driving range of 440 miles on a full charge the work truck uh, a maximum of 450 miles that's basically top of the class among EV pickups that are out right now and the Silverado EV also has 350 kilowatt charging capability and Chevy says that that can add a hundred miles of driving range in just 10 minutes when it's hooked to a DC fast charger in optimal conditions GM also has a GM energy division where they've got a whole suite of home charging solutions and the Silverado EV is of course capable of all of that equipment as well including a vehicle to home charging so if you have a power outage your truck can power your house so we didn't have the opportunity to take the Silverado EV on any really twisty turny roads to test its handling on this drive event but it handles pretty well for the big heavy vehicle that it is and notice that the four wheel steering really helped out a lot in reducing the turning radius it was fairly easy to pull into a tight parking spot or get turned around in close quarters so we 
have gotten a demo of the Multiflex Midgate and it was pretty simple to flip down the forward edge of the pickup bed wall and to pop out the rear window as well. I was thinking that that might be kind of tricky but the window is fairly small and relatively light and it stores cleverly in the front end of the, the bed wall that flips down pretty securely. So I was a little concerned about where that window glass would be stored. So the function of flipping down the mid gate is simple, but we also wanted to see what it was like to drive with the mid gate down. And because the whole back of the cab is now open, especially with the window stowed, so it's pretty much what you would expect. There's a little bit of buffeting, a little bit of wind rush. I wouldn't want to be driving it this way on a stormy, rainy, snowy day. So the, mid, the Multiflex Midgate does give good functionality, but you're gonna have to put up with a little extra road and wind noise inside the cabin if you use it. So the work truck edition of the Silverado EV starts at around $75,000. This one is more than that. It's $96,495. So fully reflective of the RST first edition's top of the line status. These vehicles are starting in production now and they should be rolling into Chevrolet dealerships soon. And Chevrolet will be fleshing out the rest of the Silverado EV lineup in the near future, including a Trail Boss off-road model that's set to debut for 2025. For my full review, go to cars.com news. For more content on Chevrolet's pickup trucks and Chevrolet EV pickup trucks, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications.